Welcome to Mike's Motor Works, and today the pistons and rods are going in our big 437 stroker motor, our Elephant. You don't want to miss this here on Mike's Motor Works. <laughs> Laid out on our table is our basic pistons and rods, all right? And what we're doing is we're just getting them numbered. We're marking them with Sharpie, and we'll eventually etch them out. And um, we're just basically making sure that everything we need is in order, and we're going to go ahead and install the rings on these guys today. Now, we do want to note that our machine shop at Rogers Automotive, he does a fantastic job at making sure that everything is matched. And when he received the pistons, he found out that one of the pistons was ever so slightly. We're talking in like the tens of thousands oversized compared to the other ones, all right? And that was our number two. So to compensate for that, he also made sure that the number two bore, when he put those sleeves in, was slightly oversized as well to match that piston. We trust Roger. He does great work. We're going to go ahead and get these pistons and rings installed and uh, attached to the rods themselves and get those on the block. Uh, our crank was installed on the previous episode. You can see that uh, torque sequence and such, uh, and where we used plastic gauge to measure our clearances there on the previous episode. Now, the crank in question is created by Molnar. Hope I'm pronouncing that name right. And it is the model number 340-4180-0. So 340-4180 EDF. And it has a four 0.18 inch stroke on this thing. So yes, bigger than some of the other strokers that are out there at four inches, this is 4.18 inches. This is fully balanced and raced ready. So it's been matched with the pistons and the rods that'll be installed on here. In fact, it is so well balanced, they rated up to 8,000 RPMs if needed. That is huge, ladies and gentlemen. The bearings that you saw on the mains, how they were a little bit discolored from the previous episode, those are Clevite race bearings. Those are model number MS540H. They've been heat treated. And of course, the um, bearings that we'll be using on our um, rods today are Clevite CB1663H. That's Clevite CB1663H. Our pistons that we'll be installing today are DSS Racing Pistons, uh, model number 2618. They are dish domed and they've been dished out so that they take up an extra eight cc's inside the combustion chamber. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are going for a high stroke, high compression here. Our rings are from Total Seal. Those are model number H121. Again, that's H121. The rods are also by Molnar. They are model number MTI XDH 6123GKB8-8. That's a long model number. But basically these are uh, connecting rods, a uh, total set of eight, and the connecting rod lengths are 6.125 in inches. That's 6.125 inches. And they come complete with um, ARP hardware. So that's kind of cool. In fact, we are using ARP hardware for the entire build. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be at 437 cubic inches after consideration of the 4.18 inches on the uh, crank, the total bore of the pistons themselves, and uh, of course, uh, we're aiming for high, high compression. So yeah, this is going to be high compression, high displacement. We are aiming high with this motor. So a little bit about these pistons themselves, and I'm doing the hand model thing here. Um, you can see a couple different things here on the camera. I'll try to keep it from being too bright here. First things first is you see this little ridge here? That's that extra 8cc. So that goes up into and takes care of um, providing that extra compression for us. Now, a couple other quick notes on the cylinder. It's on these pistons themselves. They are crossed here, right, to allow 
cross flow for the oil. Now, of course, the oil fills into these holes through splash, and of course, you can see the feeders down here. You can also see evidence inside here where the pistons have been balanced. All right, they machine those and balance those, and this is where the balancing took place. So you can clearly see where that occurred. You don't see any additional uh, grinding marks outside the standard machining on the sides themselves. All right, and of course, um, there's other places for oiling as well. Now. To get these aligned and aligned correctly, we're going to be using spiral locks, which Pop doesn't really like putting in spiral locks, but they're pretty secure, okay? And um, what they'll basically do is you got the up and down side of the piston here, right? And then if you look at your rod, you look at the little, and I don't know if, see if we can get these on camera here, the angle, 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 but basically right where my finger's at, right? Where you got those little, um, I'll use the term grooves here, uh, for where the rings line up, all right, those go towards the bottom, all right? So if you were to line it up, all right, on number two, which is on the other side here, so that'd be like lining up this way, all right? That the block is currently facing me, all right? So number two is facing the other side, all right? And this goes in and boom, we'll align it like such. Of course, to keep the oil from going up here, we'll go ahead and install our oil rings and our various compression rings. So we're going to get that process started. And uh, basically, when all's said and done, we'll be ready to go on. And we're going to work them in order one, or we already done one. We're going to work them in order two, three, four, and so on. Additionally, what we've done here is if you look at the side of the um, rod itself, we've gone ahead and etched our numbers in here. So we know that this one lines up with number two, three, four, and so on. So that if we ever need to change something out, replace crank, replace something, take these out, etc., we know exactly where those will go. And you can do that on the side here, or some people have even etched here in the center itself. But we're going to go ahead and show you the process for number two now. Adding a little bit of assembly lube there in our pinhole. Hmm. Okay, and what he's going to do here is going to go ahead and set one lock into place so it doesn't slide through. Using a flat device there, go ahead and get that. And you could use a couple different tools here. A little small flat bait screwdriver should be fine. You could use a pick tool. Um, if you have various other installation tools, you could use those as well. Ah, so if you couldn't hear what Pop said there, he says they actually make a uh, installation tool using our spiral lock installation tool. He says yeah, he doesn't want to add that to his uh, supply of, or his inventory of tools. So this should suffice for now. Basically working that into place and that groove is clearly indicated where that goes on the piston itself. Working it into place. And in goes lock number one. A little bit more assembly lube there in the pin hole. Ensuring that we're in the proper position for ups and downs there. And goes the pin straight through. Should be pretty smooth going in. 
Yeah, I gotta get straight, yeah. Through the full float wrist pin there. Our wrist pin bore there on the rod. And then in goes the second spiral lock. Again, just working that in from the bottom of the lock and around. Imagine the actual spiral lock installation tool will be a little bit easier. And there we go. All right, so that is the locks installed, the wrist pin installed, and the rod installed. Next, we're going to get to our. Well, first, next, we're going to go ahead and take care of the remaining six piston assemblies, and then we'll go back and take care of the rings.